Welcome to the Maps for Kids Showcase. I'm your host, Tierney Tennant. For our fourth installment of the showcase, we're taking you inside Fillmore Elementary School to show you the changes implemented thanks to the Maps for Kids project. Fillmore Elementary School is in South Oklahoma City and serves students in pre-K through sixth grade. Built in 1949, the school was in dire need of improvements and upgrades to serve the now 726 students. After more than two and a half years of planning and construction, the school held its formal grand opening celebration in March. And today on the showcase, we're sitting down with Fillmore principal Susan Martin. And later in the show, we'll introduce you to a second grade teacher and also the assistant principal for a different perspective. But now, welcome our top Fillmore Falcon, Susan Martin. Thank you so much for joining oh, us on the showcase. Thank you for having and us. And I really we like your, really great. your necklace. It's great. It's similar to yours. I, I'm trying to be like you. Great minds think alike. <laughs> yeah. When, when we talk about Fillmore, we're talking about a really large building that I don't think a lot of people can really grasp on how many wings and areas this building now has. We doubled our size. We had 22 classrooms and now we have 44 classrooms wow. plus the other rooms. We also went from 40, a little over 40,000 square foot to a little over 80,000 square foot of, of building. So we not only doubled the size of our building and our classrooms, we also doubled the size of our kitchen. Our kitchen is just great. So. We've gained so many room numbers and so many hall <laughs> names, and so we have decided that we're just going to call our renovated side the West End, and that has pre-K through second. And mm -hmm. then we're going to call our fifth and sixth grade hall is going to be McKinley Hall because it's on McKinley Street because we take up about four blocks if you wow. take them. So then we have our, where our offices are is our Main Street. So, I mean, you have to have it. Yes. That in that way because there's so much space and so and many kids. And then knowing where, which direction we're supposed to go. So we're putting up signs that says you are here for oh. parents so they'll know where they are. Oh, that's good. And An we'll know where we are. <laughs> Another thing that people will notice when they come in is the security improvements that you have as soon as you walk through the door. One of the things that we decided early on when we were talking about planning was the safety of our kids. And, and you know, one of the things that I wanted was the secured entry. So we have a secured vestibule. And so you have to be buzzed in. We have a window, a walk-up window buzz in, we know where you're going, we let you in. Uh, that's just for our safety and for security because we want to be safe and secure. And our, our playground we have, we lost the, some of our playground, but we still have a rather large playground. So we fenced it in, the front, the back, and everywhere so we can lock down the playground if we need to lock that down also. When I was in school, you had the principal's office, the assistant principal's office right next to, next door. But in this building, that's a little different. The assistant principal who we'll meet in a couple of minutes is actually on the other end of the building and you did that on purpose. <laughs> yes, we did. Not because I don't like her, I mean, <laughs> but because one of the reasons is that we are two buildings put together. And we have our pre-K through second, which is the lower, the lower part of our, the lower elementary and the upper elementary would be the, the third through sixth. If we centrally located the building is our cafeterias in the central location, so to, we couldn't centrally locate our office area. So. It was just logical to make an office area for the lower part of the elementary school so we'd be closer to those kids. When I went and visited your building, you called it the Green Mile because there is a Green Mile. And actually, if you walk around it, the whole thing, it is a mile, which is good for your, a healthy aspect for your students and our, staff. Our old building had green tile cut in because that's where our kids walked on the green tile, right and left, and we kept our halls in, in an orderly fashion. The architects wasn't really happy about making our long hall with green stripes in it because it just made it look longer. But we incorporated that. If you walk it two times around, it's a mile. And wow. so we're a school's healthy lifestyle. So we have our staff and students. If it's bad weather, we have our own inside track. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's a great addition for the school. Yes. <laughs> Something else, your media center is now three times larger than it was in the previous building. And yes. you did that on purpose as well. Well, you know, we have 726 kids. When we finish next year and we get all of our sixth grade and we get out and our pre-K added to our building, we'll have over 800 children. Wow. It has to be large to hold everything we need. It's the hub of the school. And so when we designed that and we looked at that, we wanted places for the, we wanted our, our computer lab there. We wanted all the places that we had for enough books and enough media. And uh, it's basically the showcase of our school. And you have a computer lab now, too. Yes. Voters should be proud of that because you didn't have that before. <laughs> no. We, we had a sort of computer lab, but uh, because of needing all the space we had, we, we did not have a computer lab. And now we have 30 computers that can hold a whole class. and We don't have to worry about getting things done, and we have a beautiful computer lab. 
When you go through the process of the Maps for Kids renovations and construction, you also talk to the students, the community, and the teachers. And one thing that the teachers really wanted you to keep, which I love, you've got windows everywhere and it's so beautiful. Well, one of the things that the staff was concerned about when we first started planning was that we would lose our windows because they'd seen the new buildings and we'd seen the secure area, you know, things. So one of the things that we asked is that we could keep that kind of feel, that open area, that feel. And so both of our sides of the building look the same, they have the same windows and it is just gorgeous and everybody is so excited. When I toured the building, we would walk through all the classrooms and you walk into a room and the lights just come on and I'm looking like, when did she turn on the lights? But that's an energy efficient feature. One of the things that, that uh, we piloted some automatic lighting, but one of the things that we decided and, and decided on that we would look at, at being some energy efficient, having new appliances and having new heating and air units helps that too because then we have that and having our thermostats that work and everything that works is great. But one of the things that is leaving on lights, leaving on things, you know, kids don't turn off lights and, and so we have automatic lighting. So what it has happened to me is I don't turn lights off at home now because I'm just assuming they're going to go off. Because <laughs> they do at school. <laughs> yeah, they just <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank I know you. we've got a couple of, of your staff members mm -hmm. that are going to be on the show in a couple of minutes. You're going to share the wealth because you have such talented people yes, over there at I'm Fillmore Elementary School. It is truly a beautiful building that taxpayers should be proud of. The brick and mortar upgrades are impressive, but you should know the Fillmore Falcons are also showing notable academic gains. When we come back, we speak with Mrs. Merritt, a second grade teacher at Fillmore, about what's happening inside the classroom. But before we head to break, here's a look at the newly renovated Southern Hills Elementary School, which is home of the Cardinals. The school is in South Oklahoma City and serves about 600 students in grades pre-K through 5th. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Maps for Kids Showcase. Today we're putting a spotlight on Fillmore Elementary School in South Oklahoma City. And joining us for the second segment is Bevra Merritt, a second grade teacher at Fillmore and someone who has been a Falcon for quite some time. Thank you so much for joining us on the showcase. Thank you for having me. And when I say quite some time, I really mean quite some time. Tell us why you return every year, 23 and counting, to teach at Fillmore. Um, well, the families, the students, my own students, I mean, my own children went to um, Fillmore. Um, I have some students that um, I had their fathers when they were in school, so it's just nice to be vested in the community and know the families. For the people who may have not visited Fillmore, describe a typical Fillmore elementary student. Um, energetic, hardworking, very hardworking, um, respectful. They come from good families and their parents really want them to succeed and they work hard. Well, if OKC residents visited Fillmore Elementary School, what would they see in regards to classroom instruction? What are you all doing in the classroom to get the students where they need to be? Um, well, we are a great expectation school, which is an implementation that the district, and so that has to do with how we talk to the students, how we encourage them, really try to use the positive approach and talk things out with them. Um, small group, large group, uh, some one-on-one, -on -one, really work to make sure that we're time on task and helping students to get where they need to be. And when you talk about your tenure being there 23 years dedicated to this school and this community, what's been the biggest change that you've seen since the day you started up until today? Well, it's definitely more ethnically diverse than it mm -hmm. was when I started, but I think the biggest change is just how large it's gotten, just the number of students that we have. Okay, so when you first started, if you can remember back. There was probably two or three of every class, mm -hmm. and now we have four, sometimes five of every grade level. So we've almost doubled. In just the last 23 years? Yes. Well, that's good, though. I yes. mean, that means you guys are obviously doing something yes. right and people want to go to your school, so. 
Yes. And you mentioned that it's ethnically diverse. You are 86% Hispanic, which continues to increase every year, not just at Fillmore, but across right. the school district. How are you and the other teachers able to meet the needs of those students? Right. Well, most of our students are SIOP trained, which stands for Sheltered Instructional Observational Protocol, which means that we've actually talked and trained on how to um, make sure that the information that we're giving to the students is comprehensible at a level that they understand and then going back and um, reteaching when we need to. We also do have um, three certified um, ELL teachers and two assistants that work really well with us too. Is it even more challenging than you think it has been in the past? Um, yes, but I know in my class I allow my students to talk a lot because when you listen to them and they're working with partners, you really hear what they know and what they don't know. And it may be a simple word that you think everybody should know that they don't know. So when they're talking, get a chance. You know, you don't ever assume they know a word or a concept that may be everyday to some people. Teaching in this new building, how is it able to assist you in um, educating your students? Well, definitely more space. I mean, we've <laughs> doubled our space size, so we're not all on top of each other. So definitely the space so that we can stretch out, um, you know, do some things inside, do some things outside as far as classwork, environment. I mean, just having a nice new building definitely sets a good, you know, environment. It makes it happy and good to come to school every day. And definitely the new library and computer lab that you talked about, it's definitely made the kids excited about learning and reading. Mariachi band, which I know Fillmore, your students travel all over the city and perform. And now under this new building with the Maps for Kids renovations, they have their own space so those students can practice and prepare for all of their performances. They used to practice in my room. Really? They had to, during PE schedule, they'd have to go find a room that they could practice in. So they've practiced in my room and they've practiced <laughs> next door and they are amazing from where they started at the beginning of the year till now. Well, and that's great for the voters yes. to know that we're able to meet the needs of the community and also the students and the school in that sense. Yes. Feng Shui, art room, is something else that I was able to see when I toured the school. There's no chairs in the art room and that's on purpose. We have an awesome art teacher um, and she just decided that uh, to give additional space and to do something a little different, that she has little knee pads that you would use if you're gardening. She bought those on her own and has placed them for the students to sit on and they love going into art and they really are enjoying it. She used to travel. So for her to have her own room now and not be on a cart going class to class, she's excited too. So own art room, we have mariachi space. I saw the music room, the art room is great. So this is really beneficial for that school because you all have been growing by leaps and bounds. Yes, yes. You also have a teacher's lounge. <laughs> that when I went in there, it was empty because you all never had one, so you don't know what to do with it, so we're still trying some ideas. To, we're still trying to find it. We need a map to know where everything is still. <laughs> well, okay, so any plans for the Teacher's Lounge? You have one now, and you all can congregate in a place. Bever, come on. No, uh, you know, we probably need to put that on uh, one of our meeting agendas to discuss. <laughs> That's a good idea. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on the showcase, and the city, the students, the school district really appreciates everything that you do for our students. 23 dedicated years at Fillmore Elementary School, so we really appreciate everything that you've done for us. After the break, we're going to take a look at how this is truly a community school, but first, let's take a look at the grand opening celebration at Andrew Johnson Elementary School. Built back in 1951, this is the home of the Jaguars. The school now boasts a renovated media center, music room, and even more classrooms. We'll be right back. Could you stand a little fun in your life? Then look no further. The Oklahoma River Cruises tour the beautiful Oklahoma River. You can enjoy a fun-filled, family-friendly, climate-controlled adventure you won't forget. Offering public cruises, exciting theme cruises, and private cruises tailored to your needs. Book your fun-filled cruise today. Log on to okrivercruises.com. Oklahoma River Cruises. Get on board. Welcome back. Joining us now is Sheila Zumer, Assistant Principal at Fillmore Elementary School. Thank you so much for being with us, Sheila. Thanks for having me. A lot of people don't know that you all have a strong partnership with Integris. It's a dedicated partner to Fillmore Elementary School, even bringing tutors in on a regular mm -hmm. basis. We have a great uh, parental involvement or, or community involvement 
project going on with Integris. They provide us with tutors and mentors who come in on a, at least once a week and they visit with children, help them on their work and um, those uh, people are stable and, and uh, a stable presence in the children's lives and they do come back weekly and um, they're invalu invaluable to our school. People don't understand how important it is to have a caring mm -hmm. adult in the life of a yes. child. So we really appreciate the partnership that they have there at Integris. They're always they're always asking us, uh, what can we do for you to for the betterment of your kids? What do you need? You need anything? Let us know, and we really appreciate that. Something fun that you guys do around the holidays is a wreath decorating project with Integris. Tell us about that. Yes, our kids love the wreath decorating contest they, or project. They look forward to it every year. Um, usually late October, early November, we, we pass out a blank Christmas wreath and the classes determine what they want to use as a theme okay. to decorate it. It could be a movie they just read, it could be a traditional Christmas theme, or it could be their favorite basketball or football team. We've had some really extraordinary ones come out in the last few years and those wreaths are displayed in a late November mm -hmm. at uh, Integra Southwest Medical Center in the cafeteria mm -hmm. and they're put up for a silent auction. Oh. And they're usually purchased by doctors or other employees at the hospital, sometimes just visitors who come in and happen to see them in the cafeteria. Um, there's many doctors that work at Southwest Medical Center and around our area mm -hmm. who decorate their offices with our wreaths that the kids have made. And then the money raised comes the back to Fillmore. The money raised comes back to Fillmore, comes That's back just, to our students. It's, you know, teaching arts, community mm -hmm. partnership, and also mm -hmm. funding some projects that the school needs, which I think is great. Yeah. You all also have really great parental involvement with your PTA. Tell us why that's so important. It's very important for us to have a, a community and parental involvement program so that we can get the parents involved in their child's life and their mm -hmm. child's education, bring them into the school, make them feel comfortable, make them feel welcome so that they can learn the tools themselves to help their kids at home. Mm -hmm. It helps to strengthen the uh, family ties. Mm -hmm. It helps to strengthen the home to school ties and it helps also helps to raise parental awareness of what the expectations of the school are. What are your expectations for the Fillmore Falcons? We expect them to rise as, to new heights. We've got a brand new building. It's beautiful. The kids are very excited about having a new building that they can be proud of. Mm -hmm. And we expect tremendous things for them. We have all this new technology that we've got, a new computer lab, they have resources at their fingertips. We have this beautiful new library that they can uh, find anything they want mm -hmm. uh, to help them with their studies and we expect them to just rise above what we've seen in the past. And, and they can. Yes, they can. They've got the resources that they need. And they've got great teachers like Ms. Oh, yes. uh, Meverett, Ms. B Merritt. They also have great <laughs> assistant principals and principals. So I want to thank you all so much for being on the Maps for Kids Showcase today. This show will air monthly on City Channel 20 and highlight programs, improvements, and partnerships that affect our city schools. For more information on the Maps for Kids project, visit OKC.gov. And for more information on Oklahoma City Public Schools, visit OKCPS.org. And as we leave you, you know it's graduation season, so here's a list of the upcoming graduation ceremonies for our seniors. Congratulations to all of those students for achieving their high school diplomas and entering a new chapter in their lives.